Now, my, my assignment is on recommendations regarding what we have been discussing since we came yesterday on this theme that we have. Um, nurses and midwives taking the lead, a push to achieve SDG what? SDG 3. Now, we know that SDG 3 has several components which we actually covered in the sub-themes. As a country, we would like to align ourselves in terms of whatever recommendations that we make or resolutions so that they are, uh, they are specific, they are achievable, isn't it? They have timelines and we also assign who is responsible. One of the commitment of our government is to achieve UHC. And there is a global slogan, I think somebody spoke yesterday, it must have been, uh, he talked about Tedros. When there was that declaration of SDG, he said now, it will be everywhere and for everybody, regardless of who you are, isn't it? And I think in the context of Kenya, UHC, we have a slogan, leaving no one behind. We know the drivers of UHC. Or shall I remind ourselves? The drivers that the government is using to achieve UHC, universal health coverage. Number one is human resource for health. Without you as frontline workers, it is not possible to immunize children, it is not possible to deliver. You heard the governor in his speech, he said, a skilled birth attendant in Mombasa was at what rate? 90? 95, isn't it? Antenental visits. It was at 99, isn't it? Except the fourth one, which was around 68. Who does that? It's human resources. Driver number two is HPTs. Simply put, is commodities. All right? Because when you don't have commodities, even when the patients come, you are helpless. Number three is data, or what we call the health information management system. Data, data, data for policy decision. We saw I think the last presenter who presented about, uh, you know, Cadex's missing, others having, it, it was heated because she simply painted the picture that, as it is, isn't it? So when you have data, you can make an informed choice. And the last driver is health financing. Health what? Financing. Health financing. And I'm bringing in this because in the panel discussions of yesterday, one of the limitations that we saw, for example, in terms of capacity building, in terms of research, in terms of uh, even accessing the digital age that we need to be in. It's because we have very limited health budgetary allocation. As a country, 
we have never realized the Abuja Declaration of 2001, which said that every country within this continent, our national budget, a minimum of 15% was to go towards health. So now, we've had uh, the five sub-themes, and I want just to ask for your thoughts around those some themes in the context of health human resource in terms of HPTs in terms of uh, data and in terms of health financing what as a, as a chapter we can do what we can be able to lobby for government to do to make our work easier and what our regional office, the SPO is here, the VP is here, should take note and help us to do. So I would like to invite a few people just to uh, share what you think should go into our recommendation around those, uh, around those areas. So the first one was uh, we were investing, harnessing the professional practice of nursing and midwifery through regulation, education, digital health, and research. Number two, investing in leadership, management, governance, for improvement of nursing and midwifery, nurses and midwives role in achieving RAMCA, uh, reproductive health, maternal, newborn, and child health, including GBV, that is gender-based violence. And then number four, addressing the current health challenges of communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, including mental health. And lastly, revitalizing PHC in the, in the era of UHC for the role, uh, the role of nurses and midwives. So shall I hear your thoughts? So good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Betty Kasioka, Kiambu County. The major issue that's affecting quality of care for RAMCA services is human resource. We know that uh, attrition is happening. Many of my older colleagues have gone on retire. More than half of the young tax are heading to the USA, the UK, Germany, and wherever. There is no replacement. Um, the politicians, of course, in the, of course, the tenderpreneurship issue, are building hospitals day and night, but there is no staffing. Yes, the nursing process is what makes us nurses and midwives. But how can that happen? If I shall be on duty alone, for example, in a post wall, with 100 women, 90 babies, and I'm expected to practice the nursing process. How? Like mine, I used to say, that is witchcraft. The nursing bodies need to sit and campaign for human, uh, to strategize for human resource to be available so that we can give quality care, reduce maternal mortality, improve uh, on documentation and we will be able to give quality care. So human resource from the national government to the county government. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, I think Betty has said two points. Number one, the associations. And I think the chapter is involved to lobby, to advocate, for greater investment so that we hire appropriate nurses and, and midwives, isn't it? 
just to be specific. And then number two, you have also talked about the issue of uh, data. And uh, I don't know that it was, uh, somebody spoke about, I think it was Judy, at a press of a button, if we were to find out from Kilifi County, for example, how many specialized nurses you have and where they are. No, I'm not talking about MTRH. Can we be able to get that within five minutes? Or will you take a month or two months to be able to locate where your staff are? Isn't it? So we need to do something about data management. You know, a national data. And uh, some work had begun by uh, NCK in partnership with the... Uh, which organization was that? Emory, which was being headed by Agnes Waudo. I, I don't know how far that this has reached, so this needs to be brought up. Any other around that sub-theme? Yes, Teresa. Then this side, so that you don't sleep. I'm just about to finish. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, just a reader to echo Betty. It's about nurses taking their space and um, having correctly trained nurses, especially specialists or subspecialists, and uh, correctly deploying them. Because we are at a space where nurses are going out to further, to specialize, and when they come back, they are being deployed to take care of shortages so that we are not being seen. Nurses cannot showcase what they are made of to run projects, to run programs, because they are going back either to respond to the political need or to cover shortages. I think we need to be given space for people to practice at the highest level of their certification. Thank you. I think that is, that is something internal which uh, as association and the chapter we need to take up. I, I would like to give this side so that they don't complain I'm favoring this side. Anybody with any thought? Yes, Dr. Monica. Thank you so much and uh, being in the private sector, maybe uh, we can also synergize because I think there are so many nurses in the pri private sector that uh, are not part of this EXA. And we, how do we have strategies to onboard them so that we are all united? But echoing what uh, my two sisters have said, I just wanted to ask whether in the EXA we have the advocacy committee because we need to strategize. We don't need to fight. Most of the times I look at how we respond to issues, it's more reactive. So can we strategize? Can we have a strong advocacy committee that is just dealing with these issues right from the county level? We can have chapters at the county level. As somebody said yesterday, it's now, this is the time we really need to nurture bottom up. How are we really getting these issues at the county level? Right now, there's COG coming up in Wasingishu, in Eldoret. Are the nurses' voices in the room? So this is the time we need to think beyond clinical, and we have our voices to demand for some of these things we are discussing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Monica. Um, she has proposed that we put up an advocacy committee. And I think this is cross-cutting both at the chapter level and at the regional level. When you see food on the table, it was cooked. It didn't just appear, isn't it? So when we see documents, when we hear decisions, a lot has gone into consultations. Are we on the table? Do we know how to navigate the terrain so that our voice, our concerns, our agenda is therein included. I think that is well 
well, well received. So advocacy is cross-cutting across all those um, areas. Yes, from MTRH. And then Mombasa. I'm Charles Salisoren from MTRH, a NASA anesthetist. Uh, we have discussed a lot since yesterday up to today, including leadership. For us to achieve, we need to be in leadership first, wherever you are, whether in political or non-political. You have seen doctors, many of them are in parliament. That is why they are able to maneuver their ways out. Even as a nursing, we need to get out of bedside and we go out there so that we can achieve what we want. We can say let the unions, association, chapters try to do their best. But when you don't have somebody to support you on the other side, and then it becomes very difficult. I can give you an example of MTRH. We used to fight between the management and the union and associations. But the moment when we came together and agreed that we have an agenda to push nurses, that is when things moved. You had my DNS yesterday saying the relationship is very good there. The nurses are enjoying working in MTRH now, unlike in counties. For us to move, we need a budget. We talk of short, shortage in every county. Because there is no allocation from the treasury, from the parliament. We don't have people to push. As my senior was saying there, that we need to have a committee, maybe to go and get this parliamentary group on budget, on health. Like I was expecting, maybe during the devolution in the washing issue, we need a committee, not Nazi Castle. That's a regulating body. The regulating body will not agitate for us. The regulating body will just make a policy of training and then keeps to outside there. So we need some body which will push now the trained people into employment. So as you think about that, let us think about how we can approach the political wing so that we can move. Thank you. If, if I hear Charles very well, I think he's suggesting two things. Internally, as the leadership of nursing and midwifery in Kenya to align so that we speak with one voice. Because we are very disconnected. Am I right? Both at the national and at the county. That is internal. But he's also suggesting that we, we need to get into the political space. Okay? And I think that came out yesterday in one of our uh, presentations. We'll see how to put this. So those of you who are aspiring, don't, don't kill your candle. Keep it burning, isn't it? Yes, it can. President Obama said that. Um, it is possible, it is doable. I saw a hand. Yeah, Jeffa. Uh, Jeffa from Mombasa, the Mombasa Hospital. Uh, a few concerns that we really need them to be taken up. Our nursing commodities control. Are we as nurses in control? What kind of syringe do you get? What kind of needle do you get? I think it's high time that we take control of the nursing commodities that we use. They should not be pushed from the procurement department to the nurses, but we are the ones who are supposed to see whether we have the right quality so that we use 
what is right for the patient. That is one. Two, basic equipments that are missing in our maybe county hospitals that are life-saving. I want to give one example of an ECG machine, which is, I'm a critical care, and I'm sorry, I don't introduce myself, and I love critical care, it's in my blood. A basic equipment like an ECG machine that will save somebody with a heart attack, you find it missing even in our lowest level, and it's very cheap to buy. So if we are able to take control, and we are supposed to quantify that these equipments are the right ones for our departments, then we are going to give the best of quality care if we are in control of these equipments. Thank you very much. Thank you. I want to give two last ones. There's a hand at the back. Gertrude, then um, at the back. Kenya Medical Training College. We are in 99% counties in Kenya. And we are training nurses, diploma, higher diploma, and the rest. Our clinical practice is our hostels in Kenya. Yesterday we were looking at the mentoring and who are we handing over to the mantle. When we train them, me, I don't have hospitals. I use our hospitals, which are in Kenya everywhere. But today as we are speaking, I'm being told my products are not performing. Who is teaching them not to perform? When a real, real nurse who is a midwife in labor ward has added the nails until they are carved, can you really get anything in the furnaces when you are doing vaginal examination? So is it a problem of the students training or the people on the field mentoring? Let us be nurses and try to make this candle to go on. Me, when I step in any hospital now and I get nurses, I will ask that nurse, are you really practicing? And I always do that with those nails. Sometimes it is painful. Beauty is important. But I think Rosemary Okova taught me nursing and she's very beautiful, even without those additions. God made us better and mentoring. The Ministry of Health said we cannot employ any more clinical instructors because the student nurses practice in our health facilities. It means they are going to have double cadre. So the practicing nurses, by virtue of you being employed, you are a mentor. Don't throw these student nurses under the bed. Otherwise, thank you. they will nurse you tomorrow. Thank you, thank, uh, you. thank you, Gertrude. Um, I think I want to I want to tie it with a point which came out when Dr. Soita did his presentation, and he said, for their training sites, the obstetrician gynecologist who is practicing is also what is also the one who will be found by his students when they come. Now there is a disconnect between KMTC, in my view, and the practicing nurses. There is a rift, okay? So besides just the nurses in the practicals being role model, but can we also see how we narrow this gap? So I think the chapter and the association should take this up. We see how we can collaborate and have a seamless. The nurse from the training, from the time they come up to when they get to the clinicals and when they walk out. Maybe we'll learn from Sirma how they do it in Nairobi Hospital. I think the next was, uh, yes, she has the mic. Um, Clarice Mboze Jimbale a nurse by choice, specialized in pediatrics, formerly of course general now working at Kenya Ports Authority, Mombasa. Just a concern for us to be able to achieve universal health care to the nurse managers, to the nurse leaders. Can we do reflection on behavior and attitude? 
These points have been echoed by my colleagues. I'm party to it, but this is my take. Before you point a colleague accusing the association, accusing the political wing, accusing the other partner as team players, what have you done at your level? Nurse managers, nurse leadership. Who is fooling who? We are witches of our own. We are all nurses here. Does it mean when you climb the ladder, you stop doing nursing? On documentation, what is not documented is not done. We are talking of shortage. This shortage to me and where I practice, there's a time I draw a line. This is cosmetic shortage. Because before you say there's a shortage, what have you done? Do you have the evidence to show there's a shortage, so this cannot be done? Through that anthem, how will the light shine if at your level you are fixed, you are adamant, because you are a manager, you are a leader, you cannot practice nursing because you are short of resources and you have no evidence. Too much documentation has shown through research. It interferes with the quality of work. Project proposal, embrace research. Project proposal at your institution, at your organization. Do you have the proposal you've made identifying the gaps, done research using the data available for you to show this is not workable? Do you have the evidence? Look at the way we condemn the, 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 the digital nurses. We brand them. But are you a role model? What are you doing? Do what as you say, not say, and then you don't do. The county the organizations have our retirement plan. They are taking care of us. Matron Director Moringa, kudos, thumbs up for you. Your retirement plan, you are going to exit. Best nurse practice, best theoretical nurse, you are going. What will the other nurses do? You go with your knowledge, you go and brag out there. So, behavior and attitude too is what is making us. I'm not a politician through this association, but I critique with a rationale. The same, same problems when I was in class three, why I decided to be a nurse, they're the same, same health issues we have. Now we are having double burden, emerging and emerging. So can you reflect on our attitude, nurse managers and leaders? Thank you. Again, being role model, which was our beginning point, where we have to lead by example. Lucy and then Ross, and there's uh, our lady here, who is almost uh, killing me. I'll give you a chance. Good afternoon, team. My name is Lucy Wansa from Machakos County, and I am pleased to be a very passionate nurse with a specialty in community health nursing. I am speaking about what I would call the frustration of the nurse in the who are under government. The private sector may not understand what I maybe I will be saying, not unless they pass through the same. We are faced by a challenge as a nurse. Currently, I'm working in the emergency department. And you realize that the government uh, provision has gone down. I don't know if to say it's kuna semekana hakuna pesa. And this one has affected the services that we give to our people. You realize like you are the nurse on duty, you have like four clients. One has uh, the problem of breathing asthma, asthmatic attack, epileptic attack, head injury, and all of them you're like, which one do I see first? Because now you have to send someone to go and buy the gloves. Another one to buy the Ventolin solution. And the patient is here and you're like, as the nurse, what do I do? And every client in the facility is looking at you as the nurse. Where is my solution? Commodity and the human resource. And at that particular point, the nurse is at 
a position you cannot be able to know what to do. How can the government help us? Thank you, Lucy. Ross? As a nurse or as nurses, we need to impress each other as one, speak in one voice, and forget about me, myself, and I. Why am I saying me, myself, and I? We are all from Kenya. We know that when it, those who have opportunity to go and lobby for what we are and what we do and what we are able to do, most of the time is muscle. I want to be seen I'm the one who is doing better. Whether it is the, our political wing, whether the NNK wants to shine the KPNA or the union, that is number one beating. If we can only sit down as nurses and say, what do we want? We put all our thoughts together so that when we leave, whoever is in a position to lobby for us, whether you are in NS NCK in the boardroom, whether you are in the association, whether you are in the ministry as DNS, we know that we had one go away. So we have a method of how we put the same point across in different manner. That will help us. When it comes to what we are calling .com, as Omia said, there is a disconnect between training schools and institutions. And this one I will speak without fear. What happens is, once the blocks are through, the theory part is through with the students, and the lecturers or the tutors send the students to clinical work, I mean to clinical environment, they are not connected. They have pushed those students for clinical nurses to mentor. That is the time now they pick, maybe, I imagine they pick their phase two of the upgrading for the time clinical people are on working. This one I will not fear. The first thing is, we killed what, it's, what is called, you know, a nurse is a skill, it, nursing is skill, skill learning. So if I'm learning about the skill, and I'm not learning how to work when I'm on night duty. Because the school has said my students are not there to do night. They, they are supposed to learn between 7.30 to 4.30 finish. Now these are the nurses I'm going to employ. These are the nurses who don't know how to run the wards at night. These are the nurses who are coming and reporting in night, night dresses. These are the nurses who carry night dresses. Yes, I'm talking because I have seen and we've seen. Yes. So once they do, they do, they do, and they start seeing which bed is empty. So you go around, you don't know where is the nurse and where is the patient. The desk is left empty. Both because they have not practiced. <laughs> Thank you, Rose. The point yes. is home. So what I'm saying is that when you release students to... The clinical. Allow the clinical to teach them through all the shifts. Let them practice through all the shifts. Number two, follow your students. You are the ones who gave them theory. Follow and see whether they are doing the practice well. That is where we are bringing and saying dot com, but we are the ones who are meant, meant, making this dot coms. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um. So on, the, on, the, on that part of practicing and non-practicing nurses, my recommendation of nursing is kindly not, let's not go much into saying you are not practicing as a nurse. As a nurse, I will, I will actually encourage that nurse because the non-practicing nurse in this case is diversifying our work. Let me tell you a good example. With the doctors, when you don't practice, they pay you the non-practicing allowance. I hope you are aware about that. So when this nurse who is not practicing, according to us, he's going into these industries and bringing the nursing career into those industries. If the nurse has joined the ministry, he is not trying to run away from nursing. He's bringing the policies there to ensure if it is our allowances are getting discussed there. If it is our policies are getting discussed there. So let's learn to blend so that we can grow as a career. Then the other part is digital health and artificial intelligence. Yes, we are calling them TikTok nurses, we are calling them Facebook nurses, but we cannot run away from the technology. 
Actually, with my students, I tell them, go to TikTok, but go there professionally. Go to Facebook, but go to Facebook professionally. So I will say, encourage the digital technology, but let's encourage it professionally, so that we don't go to a shame, but we go to promote our work. And then the other part of artificial intelligence I want to bring on is our universities. The NCK itself is practicing online exam. But now with artificial intelligence, how will we know our student is answering without copying on the internet? Or will they go just copy and then we say they passed? And like the physical exam, we will write on paper and we mark. So do we have mechanism to protect that? So we can see on how to break it down. And then the other part is professionalism. Uh, let us uphold our professionalism with respect. We can't expect the other cadre to respect us if you're already demeaning ourselves. How will the nursing student feel? I may report the first day, Nanatuma Mandazi Sanne. I believe we've practiced such. And this student is used every Sunday and one later Mandazi, or he's the one being sent the little activities of the world. If anything happens, already the self-esteem of this person is down. How will they speak up with so much confidence? So we need to build confidence in our profession from the first day they report to the world. Then the last part is curriculum development and encroachment. With our universities, we are bringing in new courses. We are innovating new curriculums for, for students, including other cadres. But we need to realize there is what we call harmonized units. And these harmonized units, unfortunately, they are attacking a lot on the nurses. Like currently, when I am placing my students in the hospitals, they will start telling me, the technology, uh, the orthopedic technologies are already in the world because they are rotating on nursing skills. But these are not nurses. What are they doing in our wards? So let's not be so generous that we are giving away our powers. So those are our rec my recommendations. Thank you. you had asked for a response from Nairobi Hospital. Yes, yes, yes. Just one minute. I will take a minute. Um, what we do, um, I think a lot, a lot of conversation has gone between that student who goes to the clinical area and how they are supported. I want to give just a bit of what we do at recruitment. Every lecturer, once they report to the college, they go to the clinical area for eight weeks. They work with the nurses because there's nothing, there's not, a lecturer cannot teach what they don't know. So they first go, despite their skills, despite their degrees, they work with the nurses for eight weeks, then they come back and they teach them. Every lecturer is assigned a department. So that even if they don't work with the students every day, they know what is happening, they can follow them up, they can pick on attitudes, and occasionally they can actually go and do skills together. So they, that has been outlined for them. Even I have an allocation. I go to the county uh, council clinics and you do, you are, you are examining the students, you are examining the patients with the students, you teach them. That way they also value the profession because they realize those that are teaching them value what they are doing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think we have gotten very rich recommendations which will be refined and it will appear in our reports for this conference. So I would like to ask uh, Dr. Koro if you can hear us. Uh, please prepare because we want to put you live now. Um, let me know. As, as he prepares, Milka, you want to administer? Just share the link. Um, I have shared out a link. We are doing a survey to be able to evaluate the conference activities so I have posted a link already to our common wall, so kindly access it. Uh, there are five questions. It's a structured uh, tool. Go ahead and give us your responses so that we can also provide, um, summarize your feelings and share. Thank, Thank you, you so Milka. much. Okay. Dr. Koro, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Fred. Uh, I'm not sure the protocol there, but I, at least I had uh, the DNS uh, being mentioned. Dr. Judy Awinja on all protocols of subs. And um, working on that platform of the protocols that have been laid by the previous speakers, 
and I want to appreciate the opportunity to talk to you uh, via this platform I'm calling from uh, our country office. I was not able to, to travel and neither was my uh, my boss or our country representative and us able to, to join you. But nevertheless, here we are and we really appreciate the opportunity to engage on this conference uh, by the Exacon uh, this, this, this week. And uh, I know that we have a CNFPA continue to engage at the country level and as well as at the regional level in which the Exacon sits. And uh, this is quite relevant for us as we strive as UNFPA to deliver a world where every pregnancy is wanted and every childbirth is safe. And on behalf of the UNFPA representative, and as we'll just try to maybe highlight a few things that we also foresee and envisage as the team concludes their discussions that they have had over the two days um, in this conference. We acknowledge, I think, UNFP has been part and parcel even from the regional office level. Um, having, the, having the part of Hexacon has believed the first, one of the first meetings happened here in Kenya where we did also play a key role in supporting the inauguration with the first presidency coming from Kenya. And we believe that this mandate is still being maintained and it's still like probably it is, the scope will be growing much wider and in any case in during challenging times because engaging in policy, engaging in advocacy, in capacity building and even strengthening the regulate, regulation or working with closely with the regulatory bodies. So, but important for us to note the emerging issues whether you are in Kenya, you are in Uganda, you are in Rwanda, or even across the globe, the emerging things that happen across that we even are, uh, we would like you as a regional body, and even for that matter, every nurse and every midwife to engage in, part of which have, have uh, of those with a lot of challenges had you speaking uh, today uh, during the short session that I've joined in, one of which includes UHC, that's Universal Health Coverage, which of course contributes which a key platform for delivery of the targets for the Sustainable Development Goal number three of good health and well-being. And this, especially in a country, host country right now for this conference, um, this has become a key priority for the government, and I believe this also for the government, not only for the EXA region, but also for the Africa at large. And uh, other components, uh, suffice to say also that on that UHC, on a platform of uh, primary health care, which we are glad and um, in this uh, celebration which is coming up for to mark the Almata the 45 years of Almata Declaration and also five years of the Astana, where Astana, which now declared primary health care, or gave more weight to the in terms of the community health being a key point to deliver quality health services or to deliver UHC and turn around uh, the, or accelerate the progress towards SDG. So some of you will be participating, or some of you probably get to acknowledge, to acknowledge that as it is coming up, uh, organized by WHO, and many countries across the globe, the many governments participating, because this was a government declaration, uh, very, very states. The other component is the issue of the ending newborn uh, action plan and uh, ending preventable maternal deaths, what we could normally call ENAP and EPMM, some of you have participated in taking note that we are in, globally you could say that we have, the maternal deaths have reduced some parts of the of Africa, some countries of Africa, still this is a challenge and you see some places it is, it is going up 
in some places of course there are good progress but we are still off the track to achieve the SDG where we, we, we look towards seeing less than 70 deaths per 100,000 live births. The other component is looking at the climate change or climate justice and we, Kenya has been going to be a country hosting the Africa Climate Change Summit coming up next month. If you, as midwives, as nurses, we need to play what does the, what does the climate change mean for maternal health? What does the climate change mean for the health in general, for our communities, for the newborn, for the elderly? What does it mean? And what does it mean more specifically? Do, I, do nurses have a role? Do Exacon, does Exacon, and therefore also for the other national associations or bodies, what role do they have to play in this arena where people are talking about climate change? Aligned to this is a humanitarian response and we challenge each one of us here to see how best do we address some of this because the pressure across the globe is quite high in terms of the humanitarian challenges that we do face. Other components is the gender and the women and economic environment or gender equality. Uh, it long are the days that we probably confine ourselves to to the world, to the clinical area. See as well, this becomes important. And as we move towards the preventive health and addressing the public health perspectives of uh, aspects of this um, of our health and well-being, we need to look at it. We need to look at other components of the social determinants of health uh, that play key role in in, in uh, the health and well-being of our community. Uh, the other component is looking at the non-communicable non diseases, and alongside this, we look at the uh, of course now because of our bias towards uh, reproductive health, talk about reproductive health, the reproductive tract cancers, but more. Again, we see we, we see the, the discussions around mental health, and I had one one of one of the presenters here discussing issues around mental health. And I think in in maybe those days that are probably just working in the clinical areas, you could hardly you could count only probably one nurse as a mental health expert, and I don't think that was no more attractive situation. But right now, I think especially since the COVID. People have been talking about mental health, mental health, mental health. And it's long time that we also venture into this as nurses and midwives. And we're also talking specifically to the midwives, there is recent uh, uh, release of the postpartum mental health guidelines. So how do we engage in this? So we should also not shy away from engaging with the politicians because politics, health is politics, and politics influence health. So as Exacon, as our body, the, body, the national association, um, associations at the country level, how do we build the capacity of uh, nurses and other associations to engage with the politicians, not to campaign for them, but to influence even the decisions that they make, so that it is which will better influence our health delivery. As Exacon, I believe you would provide guidance. You think you have your 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 mission and you have your the objectives of this of your establishment. So maybe trying to stick to this and, and try to uh, highlight some of these areas would be important. And I will not end by before mentioning the issue of evidence or participating in the research, participating in generating data right from the world where that data is being generated. The many women, the many children, the many other elderlies that we do attend to accuracy or quality of that data is important. Yes, we know the health system weaknesses sometimes are challenging because of the many registers that are there, but how do we make this possible? How do we influence that process, even in terms of getting that data? The two patients that you write are not just because you are tired and you forgot to write the eight of them, but the, you, the workload component will not be addressed easily if you don't capture that, pro that problem. If you don't have that data, which is subsequently aggregated at the national and even at the regional level, we will not have better information and therefore also have the research. I must talk about even the issue of the other global commitments, like um, I mentioned as UNFPA, we did um, participate in the fifth global symposium.
symposium, see, which was held at the, in Cape Town during the Maternal Newborn Health Conference, which, call, which talk, speak, spoke about uh, the global call, action, and commitment. Some of you may have uh, participated or may have read about it. So that calls upon all of us, and more so as a regional body, what do you do, what's your role to, for, the, for the implementation of, the, of these commitments, seven, I think there were seven or so commitments, that, the six commitments that were, were, were made during that, that symposium or during that conference, that all the bodies, all the parties, including UNFP itself, we commit to do. We work in a challenging environment, as I've mentioned, not only just because of humanitarian, but also the fiscal space, economy. We talk about inflation, not only just in Kenya, even in Europe, in America, across. And yet, we're also still talking about a human resource for health, which is constrained, talking about 70% of, of, of budgets going to, in the health sector, going to healthcare workers. And yet, at the same time, we say that we, we, we we are constrained in terms of shortage of staff, but therefore quality of care can, cannot be improved when, without, with, with just an, a shortage with a few healthcare workers available. But we still have to, come, we still have to do the best and advocate for, for better health. Adaptation of, we are living in a world of technology. How, do, how does, I think these are things that maybe you're just posting there, not necessarily that we will be able to do that. But we try to navigate around it to so how to better deliver healthcare. How does the artificial intelligence work for us? Yes, we look at it through the window. We look at it through a certain lens. But how do we make it acceptable for us? Because these are the areas that this is the kind of environment that we are working we are working in right now. How does chat GPT? We see here many some of the places, even certain countries, even within Kenya, use of the drones. To deliver uh, commodities, how do we work around it? Do we just close ourselves and at the nurse's desk, at the midwife's desk, or at the, within the theater, look at the operating bed without looking at outside how best does, does the telemedicine support, support us? And this probably these are the new ventures that we look at the models of delivery of our services to us, acknowledging at the same time that yes, there are certain areas where that technology because they still don't have the basics because of inequalities in other social economic areas, because of infrastructure, no education. So, so, but we still have to see how best to deliver for that low resource setting and deliver for the other side, the other setting that we'll be able to, so that we address the inequalities and inequities that we, we, we address. Lastly is to talk about the quality of care. We have managed, I'll use Kenya as an example, and I think this also cuts across some of the other countries, like even Zimbabwe. Access to skilled care, in terms of utilization, let me even probably squeeze about the issue of the skill, because skills is also is, a, is, a, is another thing. But access, utilization of health services has improved. We see many women have used skilled birth attendants as an example. Some of the part, parts of this country, uh, just looking at the uh, demographic health, uh, demographic and health surveillance report that was released this year. We see 99 percent skilled birth attendants, or overall, generally for the country, 89 percent. But the maternal mortality is still very high. Some parts of the country, like counties like Garissa, they think are having the highest based on the census report that was in 2019. And but at the same time we see that the skilled birth attendance is more than half. So what is it that, what is it that we need to do? We need to improve the, skill, the quality of care. How best do we introduce, the, how best do we access that? And that goes back even to the training. What are the College of Nursing and Midwifery? Because Exacon is about the college, it's, it's a college. How, what is it that you do to build the capacity of our institutions? How can we, as the partners, come on board how does the government come on board? What do the, what, how do the, the various parties play their role to improve the training, the, what you are churning and the products that come out from those facilities, from those institutions, and how do they sustain the quality and in, in the health service delivery points 
that we'll be working with. We know evidence has shown that globally, uh, more than two thirds of the maternal death, maternal and newborn deaths, will be reduced if we effectively and optimally uh, uh, have a midwifery led care. So, how do we operationalize a midwifery led care? So, it's a challenge for all of us. How do we navigate around these places? Yes, challenges are bound. Issues like self-care. How does the nurse? How does the nurses provide provide support? This. Some of these things initially we could repulse them because we just thought, how can somebody do this by by themselves? But right now, by and by, the more we release them, the more we embrace them, the better. So that we have a community which is well equipped, community which the, the, that's a person-centered care. A person who is well equipped, knowledgeable, can do some of the services by themselves and reduce the workload in our facilities. And therefore, we also now, with the, the few staff that we do have, can be able to do that which they cannot do alone. And the last, last thing is to say that we must continue accelerating towards our 2030 targets of zero preventable maternal deaths, zero unmet need for family planning, and zero. Uh, gender-based violence uh, and harmful practices as far as UNFP are concerned. We join you in, uh, in enhancing quality of care to our communities, to the women, to the children, to the mothers, to the fathers, and to the elderly, all about so that we have a well, healthy and well care community. Thank you so much for the opportunity and uh, we stand to support and work together um, so that we have a better population. Thank you so much. The time is to act now for all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Koro. We appreciate, and on behalf of Kenya Chapter Exacom, your support and the words of wisdom which you've shared with us. We will definitely reflect on that and see what will go into our recommendation as we pull the curtains for the third Kenya chapter conference which was held here in Mombasa. Asante sana. Asante sana. You can now declare the conference me. closed. Oh, okay. Was it? You have declared it closed. Okay, fine. Thanks. I, will, I also wanted to just say that allow me to log out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot. All the best. So we look forward. Asante San. Okay. That was uh, a wealth of wisdom, isn't it? Just as has been said, it is very hard to make comments after very powerful presentations have been made. This is what I wanted to say. If you look at the sub-theme number two, it was talking about policy and the rest. Now look at this scenario. When a mother when a lady gets expectant and is taken to a hospital, be very careful. When God blesses a couple that has obeyed the law of nature in the reproductive health, and the mother goes to a hospital, will go specifically to a specific region which is designated as antenatal clinic. True or false? That will culminate into another unit called a delivery room, which collectively is called obstetric unit. When the baby is born, if it's not able to survive by itself, it goes to a neonatal support care unit. True or false? If he comes to an age five and below, goes to pediatric unit in case there is a problem. True or false? Now, globally and constitutionally, Expectant mothers, children below five years, and the people aged 60 and above 
are classified as vulnerable demographics. A vulnerable person is somebody who may not manage activities of daily living independently, may need special or additional assistance. But look at our healthcare system in Kenya. Care is structured in what is called the cohort. Cohort one is pregnancy and children below two years. No, two weeks. Then there is cohort two. Then there is cohort six. Cohort two and cohort one goes to specific places in the hospital. Cohort six, where we are all heading to, and that is called gerontology geriatrics, the elderly. When they go to a hospital, they have nowhere to go. They are lumped together with adults. But these are people that are vulnerable, that need specific care. The mothers are taken care of by what is called the funk, which now is called Mama Linda. The children are taken care of by what is called IMCI. How about the last cohort, which is the vulnerable, the elderly? Where do they go to? A food for thought. We are all going there. I am at the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm there. I started very well with the sister. I am a nurse. I am a midwife. I am a public health nurse. I am now a medical sociologist. I am, the, I am concerned with the social aspect of care. Look, you prescribe a drug to a mother to go and take, but you don't know the social network that is supporting the care. The elderly comes and has got a lot of problems which are both physiological, psychological, and others, and we do not explore what is there behind which make this person have what is called optimal living. Ladies and gentlemen, a food for thought. As we celebrate and do more research in neonatology, in ops and gain, in other things, let us think of where we are going. Hallelujah.